Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So this is part three of the detail rig build. And uh, this beginning of part three, um, well, so we took the jet skis out the other day and I take the van for pretty much everything for general purpose. And uh, while this shelf that I built is very functional, um, I have decided because I always put a water hose in here and it leaks everywhere. I've got another cool situation for uh, a tank that I'm going to be putting on top of here. And this is just untreated uh, two by fours. And I feel like eventually those are going to rot. So I went ahead and purchased eight uh, two by fours in pressure treated so that I can rebuild this exact same thing and then finish it up. So that is how we're going to do that. So everything's coming out now. I know the dimensions to that. So I'm gonna build the exact same thing, but I'm gonna build it uh, with that pressure treated lumber so that the wood won't rot, but also I have to build a couple of things up here to hold the rest of the stuff. But as you can see, it's already coming on, coming along quite nicely. I could actually run the generator in here if I wanted to, or pull it out of the vehicle. Uh, I can run the air compressor, and then that's just storage for the um, the vacuum. I am going to put a support probably here and here uh, so that I can put uh, more weight on top. I am going to be building a tank, which uh, I'm not going to show you yet, but I will show you uh, when we get back. So I'm going to go ahead and rebuild that, and then you will see the new version, and then I will continue the video on the basically the upgraded so here we go okay guys and girls i'm going to show you how i'm going to build this tank and this tank i'm actually building several of these for different reasons um, the tank i'm going to build today is for the detailing rig but it is purposely for uh, infinite use detail juice one and to have a uh, gravity feed and or a pressure feed of the Infinite Use Detail Juice 1. So I took this idea from van life, because you guys know I love my van. And um, the cool part about it is you can either gravity feed or pressurize. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So here's a four inch schedule, four inch in diameter, schedule 40, 10 foot pipe. Um, I am gonna build two tanks, one of which is gonna sit right here and go all the way to the front. And then same thing on the other side, which is why I did not um, put more of the, I uh, call that the Stargazer Lounge. Uh, the reason I didn't put, uh, you know, a section of, butt that against the side and put another section of wood over here so it's complete is because I wanted that little dip uh, so I can secure uh, this four inch pipe better. Now, I could get more volume as far as uh, interior volume uh, with water out of six inch pipe. However, Lowe's nor Home Depot sell that through the store. I can order it or go to a plumbing supply company. I've decided not to do that just because this is easier and this should hold several gallons of water per tank. So I'm gonna do a tank here and a tank there and then I'll secure them down. But the end of the tank is going to be a shower essentially that I can uh, pressurize and then we could take showers in the back. I like to camp in the van a lot. Um, this is the small situation that I was going to build in here. However, I wanna build it a little bit bigger and I bought this section uh, and didn't pay any attention. This actually says not for pressure. And my point to this is either to be able to run um, gravity feed, so uh, the edge is going to come over the side here, and then I will have um, a valve that I can open where it will gravity feed down if I want. You can vent it by uh, just cracking this cap open, so that will allow the gravity feed to work great. Or I'm also going to put a uh, Schrader valve on here so that uh, I could pressurize it and basically use a, a normal sprayer and get the flow that I want, or I could pressurize it and allow it to help the siphon. 
Now, a lot of you guys are probably saying at this point, why not use a pump sprayer? Well, you absolutely can. Uh, and parts for this thing right here, just what you see is about 40 bucks. Um, my recommendation, well, obviously that's a problem. Whereas this one does not say that. They're both schedule 40. I'm not sure why it says it, but this one doesn't say it at all. So it is what it is. I have this laying around. I need to build the smaller one first and then I'll build those two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this to the length I need because obviously that's too small because uh, I want it to take up the whole back of that uh, situation right there. And so when you gravity feed from over four foot, you actually get better um, flow the higher it is. So anyway, I'm going to cut this. I'm going to measure and then I'm going to cut this to what I need it to be. And then, uh, like I said, I'm going to put it in here lengthwise and um, this cap right here, there was no way to mate that up. So I'm going to have to basically, I think that's about four inches. I'm going to cut a four inch section off of this one right here. And then I will use the uh, PVC glue to glue that on. And then I'll cut the other piece and then put that other cap on and mount that in there. And then I'll find a way to secure it to this platform. But as you guys saw in the, beginning of the video i'm about to rebuild this platform out of pressure treated lumber because i don't want it to rot and i generally carry a hose for the jet skis and that kind of thing uh, i clean them out every time i use them but i do it at the boat ramp so i don't want any residual water either leaking from the tank somehow uh, or if i've got some kind of failure in there or you know a pipe bursts or the hose leaks all over the wood i don't want it to rot so um, I'm going to pull that out and rebuild it out of the pressurized, pressure treated lumber I have right here. And then uh, I'm going to keep rolling with that, but I gotta, I'm going to build this tank first. So I'm going get, to get working on that. Like I said, nothing fancy. Uh, you could absolutely use a pump sprayer just like this. Uh, there's no reason not to per se. Um, I'm putting this in here as more of a permanent application uh, that will be for infinite use detail juice one uh, and those on top will be for either deionized water or regular tap water if I want to take showers uh, wherever we're camping. Uh, some of you guys know I just bought a bunch of property and uh, we camp on the property a lot while it's being developed and uh, that's going to help us with showers. So anyway, I took this idea from van life uh, uh, for the ones on the roof. I will absolutely uh, be uh, sanding, scuffing the outside of the pipe and then painting it flat black so that uh, it'll take up a lot of the heat and warm the water up, which will help with car washing. It'll also help for showers. So I'm going to get started on the tank and we'll be right back. All right. So as you can see by my random mess, I have removed that one, which I'm actually going to finish up and make into a bench and we're going to paint it and put it on uh, the front porch over there. Uh, so that is the pressure treated rack. You'll notice I added that brace in the back from part two. And you'll also notice how awesome it fits. Perfect. Measure three times, cut once. That's how I do it. Anyway, so that's going to serve as the basis for how everything goes in there. As you saw before, the generator will go in, the air compressor, which if you don't do air injection, <laughs> you're missing out. Uh, with that air compressor and this tank right here I'm going to build. Well, it's already pretty much built. I just realized that my um, PVC cement is all dried up from the last time I used it. I actually sealed it shut, but it's still dried up. But anyway, this tank, if I can get ugh, with one arm, this tank is going to sit in here like this. And because of the way it's designed, I'm going to be able to not only gravity feed, so if you'll notice, it's not pushed in all the way 
uh, and this gap should be completely shut. I uh, just cut this off of that coupler off of that long 10 foot piece I had because the other one, as you saw, says not for pressure, which seems to be the same thickness. Um, I don't know why it would say that. I know this one does not. So I had it, so I'm gonna just go ahead and roll with that. So this will be slightly shorter when I'm done, but I'm guessing, I mean, all right, so this is the, well, this is the uh, universal clean and prep uh, mixed one part water to, I believe eight, or I'm sorry, one part product at about eight, eight parts water. So this is a gallon and I would say that's about a gallon, two, three, four. I'm guessing that is five gallons worth of interior volume. I'm not sure yet, but that's plenty. So I'm gonna put the, um, actually, if you'll notice, this groove right here is where it's most likely gonna go. And I purposely, well, actually, I might be able to strap it right there. But if you'll notice, this is up higher than this side. And that's good because I want a slight angle on that because that's the end that the gravity drop is gonna happen with. Um, I am gonna put a Schrader valve fitting on here so that I can pressurize the tank. Um, the clean out cap right here can be loosened to vent the tank for the gravity feed or tightened uh, so that I can pressurize the tank with 20 to 30 PSI, I would imagine. I'm gonna test it. Uh, I don't wanna go beyond its limits, but uh, that's kind of where we're at is, I want a slight angle so that it can uh, basically keep feeding down, which is good that it's lifted over there. So I thought about that be beforehand. It should work fine. I mean, worst case scenario, I could always prop this side up if it you know, is just not at a good enough angle, but that's kind of where we're at. Uh, I'd probably, yeah, I'm probably gonna try to just secure it back here on that last two by four. That way I've got more room up here. Um, my product storage is gonna go on top and all my accessory storage is gonna go on top. I still want a clear view from, well, that is obviously blocked, but I have that window. So that's kind of what we're working on right now. Again, I can't finish the tank right now, so I'm going to go ahead and get everything put back in here, see where everything needs to be, and then uh, i got to figure out where I want to put everything for the top, but for the most part, that's all I need for detailing. Uh, that little step stool, a um, couple of uh, extension cords. Uh, I may or may not keep this set up. I don't like that the pressure in that made the quick disconnect on the gun leak so I had to basically permanently put it on there and it makes it hard to roll that hose up so I'm gonna have to figure out something with that but anyway we are well on our way to get things figured out I'm um, gonna use and the cool part is I can still pull this off and get to my uh, everything I need to change a tire there's my off-road jack back there and then the mounting plate is there for the bottom or not bounding plate but the uh the base plate so i can still get to my jack even if i've got to do it from the front so just make sure all of that uh, even like in your mobile detailing if you're using a car and you've got a trunk you want to make sure you can get to your uh spare tire and stuff like that without having to really change everything uh you need your safety stuff which i used to carry a box which is in my garage right now, but I, I carried a box that was right here that I could close and open uh, to get stuff out of it. But um, I'm gonna actually move all of that to underneath the seat because nobody uses that space. So that's kind of where everything is gonna go. So this is part three, which is really part two done over plus a tank. So that's kind of where we're at now. I'm gonna put everything back in there. Um, I'm gonna finish up I guess part three with that, uh, the benefit to you watching part three was I was using leftover wood on that, which I just didn't feel comfortable with. Cause like I said, I put 
Um, we, we go boating and jet skiing a lot in the summertime, so I need a place to put an actual 50 foot hose and my sprayer and that kind of thing. So I'm going to be able to stick that right down in here, which is awesome. And then the ears for the boat and uh, the sprayer nozzle and all that will go all over there as well. And then um, between the uh, vacuum and the air compressor, I can put a hose. Uh, the vacuum hose will go in there. Uh, my Flexzilla hose will go in the other side. Uh, I'm going to have to see what kind of weight I'm going to have up top first to make a decision whether or not I'm going to put bracing in between or on both sides of the uh, pancake air compressor, this guy right here. So we'll see. Um, I don't anticipate putting a lot of weight up there, and if I do, I'm probably going to make sure it's to the sides. But I really do not want that center to sag because that'll just make my OCD flare up, and ain't nobody got time for that. So we'll see how that goes. I might put additional braces in there. We'll see. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and throw everything back in there, and we'll be back to complete part three. All right, boys and girls. So I got it kind of done. And then in the middle, the girlfriend came out and said, hey, can you make us a bench for the kitchen table? So anyway, I did that with the other wood. So it is definitely not completely functional. However, this is everything I'm going to carry with exception of maybe I might switch to 16 ounce bottles of the concentrates and I might try to find a way to brace this all in a little bit better. Um, by maybe putting a piece of wood here and one here. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. You can see the tank back there. Again, it's going to gravity feed from this side, probably out this section, uh, so that I can, with a quick disconnect, where I can hook and unhook and then leave it hanging there, and then just uh, so that I can hang or connect my... I'm going to carry a 50-foot and a 25-foot. That's the 25-foot Flexilla hose. 50 is really good for working out of the back of the van. Uh, I do have a little cart that will actually fit right in the back there uh, in case I want to maybe put the compressor on the cart and maybe I'll build a smaller tank. Or no, this actually would be perfect for the cart situation. I may or may not carry it though. But anyway, it's coming together. Um, again, I, I'm going to drive around with this just sitting up there. It's not a whole lot of space on either side where it can move. Uh, I mean, I guess this could fall, go all the way that way, but it really can't go anywhere. Um, cool part about the van is uh, I also have USB back here, or not USB, I have a uh, 12 volt outlet where I can run. I'll show you guys the air compressor that I'm gonna use to uh, charge the tank. It's pretty awesome. It's a digital job that actually will keep it filled. You can pre-program it to um, whatever pressure you want. So if I wanted to keep that thing pressurized, pressurized at, we'll say 25 PSI, I can set the digital um, air compressor up to, you know, if it goes below 25, it'll actually fill it so I've got ideas for that. Um, again, it's not an incredibly, incredibly complicated build, uh, which, you know, I like simplicity uh, in pretty much everything I do. So we're going to see, uh, like you'll notice that all the weight, so with the products and with the polisher bag and that kind of stuff is at each end. So I'm not going to put a lot of weight right there. So that's the bag of microfiber towels. Um, this is the bucket that I use, just a two gallon bucket with all my brushes in it. And then that's my extension. I keep uh, two other 25 foot extensions in there also, but that's what she's looking at now, like now. Um, so this is uh, part three. Uh, I will do the grand finale when I figure out exactly how it's gotta go in here. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna drive around uh, today and uh, you know, shake it, shake the wheel here and there and see where she moves, but you'll notice at the back, there's also not, no room for anything to move here either. So not a whole lot of place for things to move. So I'm not sure it's gonna be a problem just leaving it up there like that, but I will most likely uh, find a better solution. I was going to put a, um, I was going to put 
It actually fits like that a little bit better and there's more room up there. I was going to put a milk crate in here with all the products, but because I don't want to risk the products if any of them, if I drop a bottle and for like, for example, I dropped that the other day, that's the universal shampoo and I cracked the lid and uh, that would leak out if it were, were to fall sideways, I need to put a new lid on it. But I wanted something that uh, would keep the product contained and this, this thing I got from, I think Walmart years ago, but that's where I keep my products. And then I've got some applicator pads, my clay bars are in there. Um, I always keep my applicators in a Ziploc bag as well as the clay that's down there. And then this is my, just my, air tools and stuff, a regulator, um, just a blow gun, a tire checker and inflator, and then that purple gun. So that's where we're at right now, guys. I'll see, it probably won't move around as much if it's like that. I also have to secure that tank. I, I have to glue the tank together, put the Schrader valve in, put the relief valve in, or not relief, but the gravity feed uh, valve in, um, and then, like I said, this is the relief air relief uh, valve here. I'm just going to be able to hand tighten that and loosen it up. But that's it. Stay tuned for the grand finale or part four. But the next video you, you see will be me uh, having this thing complete. So have a great day, guys. Check out Gary Dean's Detail Juice Nation. It's a group on Facebook where we talk about only my products, my processes, and what I've got going on. Check me out on Instagram at gary.dean.35. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.